Hi guys, it's Prof. Harry Bester from Roaring Truth Ministries. Let us pray together. Abba Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your word that is truth. Thank you, Abba Father, that the truth we know sets us free. Your word says in John 8, 32. I pray, Lord, that every word that proceeds from my mouth, that it will be 100% in line with your word. I pray anything that I speak that is my opinion, my interpretation, theology or doctrine, Abba Father, I pray that you will close my mouth for such words, Lord, so that the words spoken be 100% in line with your word. I pray, Lord, that you will wash my mind with your word, touch my mouth with a coal of fire, Lord, so that the word that is spoken be pure and from the throne room of the great I am. I pray that in the mighty name of Yeshua. Amen. Guys, I want to just draw the picture um, from the Hebrew language that we see in Deuteronomy 30 verse 20, which is one of the most beautiful pictures um, if you look at it. So if you read Deuteronomy um, from actually Deuteronomy 28 to 30, you see that um, that Abba Father speaks to us um, and, and he says, I've given you instructions and these instructions are not confusing nor are they unattainable for you. In other words, um, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. To follow me is not an unattainable goal or confusing. It's straightforward. And then he continues in Deuteronomy 30 to say that he has set before us um, life and good and death and evil. In other words, he gives us this choice. It's interesting if you look at the word good in Hebrew, it's the word tov, which means good, but it also means in Hebrew it means functioning according to purpose. So all of a sudden in creation, um, it makes so much sense that Abba Father would look at creation and say, um, it's good, it's tov, because tov means functioning according to purpose and he is all good so except for the fact that everything he creates is good it's also functioning according to purpose in the way that he created it to function and then he says uh, it's almost as if he says you have this choice between um, uh, the good and life and death and evil, and you have to choose. And then in Deuteronomy 30 verse 19, he says, I've set life and death before you today, blessing and curse. Now, it's interesting if we look at curse, because many times we grow up with this picture, um, if I don't serve God, he's got like this stick, and because I'm disobedient, he hits me with that. But you know the Hebrew picture for curse is actually the same word as self-inflicted pain. In other words, if I invite you, Abba Father says, if I invite you to me, if I invite you to covenant and you choose to turn around and walk away, you will walk into hurt. You will walk into um, that curse. And it's not because of me. It's because of you leaving me. Um, and it's, it's a beautiful picture that we, that we see in that. So the curse that he's speaking about is self-inflicted. In other words, he's got the invitation, but he gives us a choice. Um, because love is a choice, so he gives us a choice. And if we decline the invitation, um, we will end up in bondage and under attack and give legal ground to the enemy. And that's where this whole picture comes from. And then he says in Deuteronomy 30 verse 20, which I want to have a look at the Hebrew with, he says, that thou may love the Lord thy God, and that thou may obey his voice, and that thou may cleave unto him, for he is thy life, and the length of thy days, and thou may dwell in the land which the Lord swore unto thy fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. So, if we look at this, he starts off by saying that you may love the Lord your God. Now, 
The word love, I think we all know this, in Hebrew is the word ahav. But Abba Father uses something different here. He uses two words. He uses ahav et. Now we've spoken about this et, this aleph tav, um, which is a picture um, um, uh, of the aleph, the first letter in the aleph be, um and the Tav, which is the last letter, the first letter being this picture of the power, the almightiness of Abba Father, representing Abba Father himself, and um, the first letter, the Tav, the last letter, picture of the cross. So, right through the word, and we've spoken about this more than 11,000 times, right through the word, you just see this word, Aleph Tav, Aleph Tav, Aleph Tav. And then in Revelation, Yeshua himself says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. In Hebrew, that is, I am the Aleph and the Tav. In other words, God who died on a cross. Because he became man um, to pay for our sins on the cross of Calvary. So we see this picture that he says, Ahav et. Now Ahav is that love for the Father, that intimacy, that friendship, that covenant love that Abba Father invites us to. But 1 John 4 verse 8 B says God is love, Abba Father is love. So he says he invites us to his love, but he adds this Aleph Tav. He adds this picture of Yahweh. So he says, um, you can love me through Yeshua. In other words, and we know this picture, um, it's not just, if you use a have it, it's not just love, but it's love that leads to something. And in this case, love that leads to life. And then he puts this picture of Yeshua in there to say, the love that leads to life leads, goes through Yeshua. And this is like in Deuteronomy, there's a picture of Yeshua and the salvation plan of Abba Father. And we know that we can only come to the Father in this covenant love through um, Yeshua and the price that he paid for us, entering covenant through the blood of the Lamb. So all of a sudden it makes sense when the word says in John 14 verse 6, Yeshua says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but through me. So here our Father invites them to love him, um, but he's already putting his salvation plan in there. Um, so we, we see this picture in that. Um, and the first thing he says is, if you want to love the Father, If you want to love the great I am, the first thing is this way. And we have this picture of Yeshua. And then he says, um, love and that thou may obey his voice. Now obey, the Hebrew word here is the word Shema. Um, which means to hear, to listen, and obey. Now many times we as parents would say to our children, listen, don't, don't, are you listening to what I'm saying? Don't just hear me. You've got to listen. And then you expect action. Because it's great for me to, um, to say to my child, please switch off the light. He or she can hear it. Um, they may even listen. But if it doesn't go over into action and they actually go to the switch and switch it off, um, uh, uh, the whole thing means nothing. So this Shema in Hebrew is, listen, whenever you hear something from me, I expect action from that because that will be... Um, a, 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 a proof that you are in covenant with me. That's why Yeshua says in John 14 verse 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, let it go over into action. That's why James says, if you have faith without action um, or without deeds, um, your faith is dead. That's why he says that's because it's this Shema con concept in Hebrew that he's speaking about. So, 
we have this word Shema, and then he says, to obey the voice of the Father. Now, um, the voice in Hebrew is the word Kol in Hebrew, which means a voice or a loud call, a proclamation or declaration, words that are declared from the mouth of the Father. That's this voice um, of the Father. And then we know in Psalm 119, verse 142, it says that His Word, the words He speaks, that His Word is truth. Um, so He says, if you love me, I, I invite you to love me, this I have it. And we see this picture of Yeshua in there. And then He says, and obey Shema, um, uh, my voice call, um, because my word, that the words that I utter, they are truth. And we also know John 1 verse 14 that Yeshua is the living word. So we see this picture again. He says, love me, come to me, love me. There's a way to the Father. And then he puts this picture of Yeshua in there. And then he says, and Shema, my voice, my word, listen to and do, obey my word, which is truth. Um, and then he says, um, that you may cleave, that thou may cleave unto me, for he is thy life. In other words, that you may cleave unto me. Cleave is the Hebrew word tafak. Now, davak means um, to stay close or to be joined to. Um, but listen to this, davak or davak is also the word that means to catch through pursuit. Or in other words, to pursue in a way that I will find it. To find in this pursuit. In other words, he's saying, you have to pursue me in all your ways. Pursue in that fullness. It actually means, the fuck means, you will find him if you pursue hard. That's the direct translation. So it's not just, okay, a casual thing. I'm a Christian, I'll see what happens. It's that pursuit of the presence of the Father. And then if you press hard, if you press in, he says, you'll find me. And that action of pursuing hard after the father um, that's that picture of being joined joined to him and we know um, the word teaches us that if we are in christ we become one with him in spirit so once again we have this picture of yeshua being the way he's the living word and then we find the life in that so he says you've got to cleave onto that um we know Jeremiah 29 verse 13 says, If you seek me, you will find me if you seek me with all your heart. That's that pursuing heart that this cleave, this dafak is speaking about. And we also know that, that James says, um, in James 4 verse 8, he says, Draw near to me, Abba Father, and I will draw near to you. It's this picture of cleaving. But he says, you've got to pursue me and you've got to press in heart. Um, it's not this religious exercise to soothe my conscience. Um, it's a pressing into the presence and the face in Hebrew, that face to face. Panim al panim in the presence of the great I am. That's what he's after. And he says, if you cleave unto me in that way, if you unite with me in that way, then I am your life. Then he says, um, you will find that life. Now, life in Hebrew is the word chai. Now, chai means to live or to receive life through being born. So that's our physical birth. Um, but listen, chai also means a promise of life and life through, listen to this, revival or quickening. A promise of life and life through revival or quickening. And we know that the word says that when Holy Spirit fills us, Holy Spirit quickens us. And we see this word. So we've got to remember one thing. We have our, sp our physical birth. Um, 
which we know, and Yeshua spoke in John 3, he speaks to Nicodemus about this. He who is not born from water and spirit will not see the kingdom of God. So we know the water birth, we've all been born in a physical way. But Jeremiah says in Jeremiah 1 verse 5, he speaks about many things that happen before you are born. Because Jeremiah 1 verse 5 says, Before I formed you, I knew you. And before you were born, I sanctified and ordained you. So he says, listen to this, he says, Before you were formed, I knew you. Okay, so, so listen to this. Um, uh, this is still in your mother's womb. You haven't seen uh, the daylight. Um, before I formed you, I knew you. Formed in, the, in Hebrew is the word yatsar, which means a potter squeezing clay into shape. In other words, it's putting you, molding you into shape. Before I molded the vessel, I knew you. New in Hebrew is the word yada, which is that intimacy, that place, one in spirit, uh, that intimacy, because we know John 4.24 says, Abba Father God is spirit, so being united, being from that place, one in spirit. So he says, before, as the potter, I formed you, yatsar, I knew you, Yada. In other words, you were born from me in spirit before I put you in a container or I started forming your container. And then he says, and before you were born, I sanctified and ordained you. Now, if you look at sanctified and ordained in Hebrew, it means I set you apart. And ordained means, listen to this, it's like a potter making something from clay. But this Hebrew action of ordained means it's, it's putting in the detail of the vessel that is being formed. What do you mean, Harry? Listen, if you making, let's say you're making a milk jar. Um, it differs from the cup in the sense that it has a spout. Um, so this action of being ordained is the potter making the vessel, but then like almost with his finger touching the vessel, putting in the spout so that the milk jar can pour. Because if he doesn't have the spout, it's not a milk jar, it's a cup. It's still a creation from the potter, but it, it, the purpose changes. So that ordaining in Hebrew means p putting in all the gifts all the talents, everything that he has, that he dreams over you, that Psalm 139 speaks about. If you want all the thoughts and the dreams that I have over you, it's better for you to count the grains of sea on the, uh, of, the of sand, sorry, on the sea, um, on the bottom of the sea, because um, you'll, you'll be able to do that in an easier way. All the thoughts and dreams he has over you. So, and then he says, you are born. In other words, then you see the daylight as a baby. So before that, he says, I've taken you from me, um, Tselem Elohim, to the image of our Father. Then I started forming your container. Um, and then I put everything inside that um, all the talents that I would give unto you, all the gifts that you would need, all the equipment that you need to pursue purpose, the purpose that I formed you for. Um, because uh, if to use our example, if he formed you as, let's say, the milk jar, he's not going um, he's not gonna form you without the spout. He's not going to form you without the handle of the... It's, and those things in the Hebrew picture are like the gifts and the talents and everything that he dreams over you, that he puts upon your life, and then you are born. And then we know that we all sin and fall short of the glory of Abba Father. And then the enemy starts um, eating away at this and he starts lying to us. And the moment we believe the lie, we empower the liar um, in our lives. So we see this. So this word for chai, um, because listen to how amazing this is. It means being born, in other words, that physical life of being born from water, from the womb of your mother. 
but it also means a, a promise of life or to receive life through revival or quickening. But listen to this, because Chai also means to repair or heal, that is healing, to repair. In other words, if the milk jar breaks, um, I'll fix the crack. That Rafa, we speak about God being the healer, Yahweh Rafa. That Rafa in Hebrew is a potter with his hands on the clay. And he then fixes the cracks or whatever's wrong with the jar to restore it to purpose. He still wants it to do what he created it to do. So Chai also means to repair through healing, to restore back to purpose, to recover, that is free from bondages like addiction, to nourish, that is to feed, and to preserve, in other words, to keep in health, that is the physical part, which is mentioned last. In other words, if certain, certain things happen, then it will manifest in a physical healing and um, extend your days, for example, um, because then it continues to say, um, and the length, length of your days. So we're going to put it together in a minute at the end, this Hebrew. If you take all these Hebrew pictures and you put um, Deuteronomy 30 verse 20 together, it's going to blow your mind if you put all these pictures together. Length is the Hebrew word orech. Orech means physical days, um, physical days being deferred or drawn out. So it, it, it uh, does apply to our physical. But orech also means um, being deferred in the spirit forever. In other words, it's a picture of everlasting life. So that your life, that extension of your life, starts with our Father wanting to give you eternal life in spirit um, and then from there he says I will restore you I will repair you I will break bondages over you I will feed you in other words be Yahweh Yireh, the God that provides and um, for you I will all of that will fall into place but Matthew 6 33 first ye seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things will be added unto you it's that picture it's the same picture here but listen to this, this length, this deferring or drawing out of um, time, days, um, because that's the days is the word yom, which means time or year or days, physical or everlasting. Um, it's, 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 a, it's a picture inclusive of all of this. But this orech that determines the length, and listen to, this is just for you to understand it. It also means self-restraint or patience. You know what the Hebrew concept of patience, being patient is? Listen to how beautiful it is. If you translate it directly from Hebrew, it means stretching out the character of Abba Father in your life all your days. How beautiful is that? Because that stretching out is orech, which means it stretches in my life. It stretches out the character of Abba Father, and it defers it in all my days. And then I walk in patience. One of the things, one of the characteristics of the Father, there are many other things. How beautiful is that? And then he says that thou may dwell in the land which the Lord swore unto thy fathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to give unto them. And this is the last part of the verse. This, that you may dwell. The Hebrew word yashav. Now yashav means to settle. That's physically. Um, settle or be content. But listen to this. Yashav also means to marry, to enter a marriage covenant and remain there, remain in that place of covenant. So on the physical, in the natural, it means to settle and be content with what Abba Father, and we'll see that in the next word, what he has entrusted to you. And then it also means 
to enter covenant, uh, that's this marriage covenant, and remain in that. But listen to this, because then it continues, Yashav, to say, because if you remain in that, if you remain content, and you remain in that covenant of marriage, it enables you to endure. That's all in Yashav, the Hebrew picture. So that's what equips you for endurance. So when he says, those who endure till the end, um, he, if you look at the Hebrew picture, he's saying, those who remain in that covenant, those who remain in that place and remain content with what I've entrusted them and remain in that place where I have called them to, um, they will enter the kingdom of God or see our Father. And then he says that, that you may dwell in the land. Land in Hebrew is the word Adama. Adama means the gro ground, the physical with which I've entrusted you. That's that picture of Yashav that means um, to settle and be content with what Abba Father has entrusted to you. Um, so that, listen to Adama, so that you can till or replenish what I've entrusted you to. Now, if we look at Genesis 1.28, we see that um, uh, replenish or till in Hebrew means um, to fill the earth with the image of Yahweh. To fill the earth with the image of Yahweh. In other words, he's saying, um, for the physical, I need you to settle and remain content with what I've entrusted to you um, because in that, you will fill everywhere you go, wherever you move, you will fill. Um, where I send you, you will fill this, the place with the image of the great I am, with Abba Father himself. But listen, Adama doesn't stop there, that, that word translated as land, because Adama also means husband. So all of a sudden you see the physical and um, wherever you go on earth, whatever I've entrusted you, whatever I've called you for, and um, be content with that, walk in that, and um, spread the image of the Father. Um, duplicate, multiply the image of the Father. Carry it out to wherever you go. The image of Yahweh Elohim. In Hebrew that word, Selem Elohim, made to the image of God. Take that wherever you go. But then in the spiritual it means to marry and to remain in that covenant of marriage with Abba Father. Um, and then you put Adama there um, so that he can be like a husband unto you. And that's where we are the bride. We see that picture. And then he says, the land that I've swore um, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's the last word I want to look at. He swore is the Hebrew word Shava. Now Shava means to be complete because he's given a promise. He's sworn to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob this promise. Um, Shava, sometimes they pronounce it as Shiva. Um, in Hebrew is also the word for the number seven. And it means complete. That's why seven represents the completeness and perfectness of Abba Father. Listen to how beautiful Shava is. If you directly translate it from Hebrew, it actually means um, to swear by declaring seven times. In other words, to swear, to make a promise by declaring seven times um, is that completeness, that picture of completeness. So he's saying um, the perfectness and completeness of the promise of Abba Father. The perfectness and completeness of Abba Father because he's a sovereign God and the promises that he makes. He's not a man that can lie, the word of Abba Father teaches us, right? So he speaks about this perfect promise from the Father. And then he says, which I've promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now we know, we know that that is the promise of the, uh, the faith generation, um, the bride. We know this picture that Abba Father sees, um, this generation of believers that he, st that he called Abraham for. And then Paul writes in Galatians, um, Galatians 3.29, he says, um, and if you are in Christ... 
You are part of Abraham's seed and heir according to the promise. Which promise? Shavah, sworn the perfect promise to Abba Father. The perfect promise from the Father's heart unto the faith generation, his bride. So, and we know that into the promise, the bride was led by Yeshua. It's the picture of Joshua leading the children of God into the promised land. When they crossed the Jordan River, Joshua and Yeshua in Hebrew spelled exactly the same. It's a picture of he taking us, uh, Yeshua himself taking us into that promise because he paid for our sins. He died for us on the cross of Calvary. So can I put Deuteronomy 30 verse 20, all these pictures together and listen to this because this is going to blow your mind if we put this together. You're invited to love Abba Father through Yeshua because the price paid opens the way. Through hearing, listening, and obeying what he proclaims and declares in his words, his instructions are truth. If you pursue him hard, you will find him. And if you find that, you will find him, if you find him, you will find true life. Firstly, everlasting life, and you will also be repaired through healing, restored back to purpose, recovered, f recovered by being freed from bondages like addiction. You'll be nourished um, as he feeds you in his provision, and you'll be preserved in health, kept in life in your physical days. If you settle in the covenant of marriage with him and remain there, he will be like a husband unto you that will enable you to endure in life as you replenish or till, fill with the image of God that which he entrusted to you. His promise is perfect and complete, and those who are in Him through the Aleph and the Tav, a picture of Yeshua, will be heirs according to His everlasting promise to the bride. How amazing is that? That's Deuteronomy 30 verse 20. May it bless you, Prince, Princess of the Most High God, and may we walk in that. And may we choose the good life, the goodness of the Father, of functioning according to purpose as we return to covenant. Abba Father, thank you for your word. Thank you, Abba Father, that I pray that you will write this word on the tablets of our heart, Lord. We worship you and we praise you. You are the great I am, the only living God. I pray that in the mighty name of Yeshua. 